I bought my current home for £545,000 and got it mortgage surveyed for £950,000 a few years later. And do you want to know the best part? That increase in value, that extra £405,000 of value is all tax free if I choose to sell my home. In this video, I'm going to share the three steps to make your home an investment like I did. But first, let me explain why all of that value I made would be tax free. When you buy a home to live in, not to rent, but to live in as your home, when you then go on to sell it, any profit you've made is tax free. In contrast, if you bought a property as an investment to rent, if it goes up in value and you then sell it, because that property is not your main residence, not your home, any profit is treated as income you are then taxed on for capital gains. That's a big deal when you consider the current tax rates. So for me as a higher rate taxpayer, if I earned an extra £405,000, for example, I'd be taxed just over £182,000 on that. But if I sold my home, that extra £405,000 is 100% tax free. That unlocks a huge amount of cash that will help me then buy an even bigger home as my family grows because I can sell that home to buy another. This is really important because all of us should be treating our homes as investments as well as homes. The way to look at it is the more money you make on your first home, then create the bigger deposit to upgrade to your second home and so on and so forth. So getting this right can dramatically change how you're able to move on to bigger and bigger homes if you so choose. So anyway, step one, you need to buy smart. I see so many people fall into the trap of buying new build properties. If you've bought one yourself, I'm not aiming to make you feel bad about it in any way, but ultimately buying new is like buying a new car. You are paying a premium for it. And so in a lot of instances, it can be really, really hard to buy a new build today and then sell it for more tomorrow. If you're wanting to buy a home with an investment focus, you need to ideally buy a property you could buy today and it'd be immediately worth more tomorrow. You need to buy below market value. So for example, with my home, I knew I wanted to buy within a certain area, but rather than just view properties in the flesh I liked, I focused on trying to match that to properties I felt I could secure at a favorable price. So I researched properties online, spoke to agents and queried if the sellers would consider lower prices than I felt the property was worth. The property I ended up buying was on the market for £600,000, but after speaking with the agent on the phone, she said the seller would likely consider selling for five fifty dollars if I was able to buy quickly. I viewed the property the same day, offered £500,000, which was rejected, and after negotiation ended up securing it at £545,000. I knew full well that if I wanted to sell that property the day after, I probably wouldn't get the £600,000 it was on the market for, but I'd certainly get more than the five four five I paid for it. Step two, buy something you can add value to. So if you can merge buying below market value to then buying something you can add value to, you're on to a real winner. And that is exactly what I did. The property I bought was livable. It had been a buy to let property for years, but it was dated. In reality, everything was coming towards the end of its shelf life. This is exactly the sort of property you should be looking to buy and exactly what I wanted. The last thing you want to do is buy a property with a brand new kitchen and then replace the kitchen. <laughs> if you can buy a property that is livable but requires modernization, not only can you little by little update the kitchen, update the bathroom, repaint the rooms and so on over time, um, which will add real value to the home, to your property, but you then get the extra value of making the property exactly how you want it, the colors you want, the fixtures and fittings you want. Better yet, if you can buy a property you can add square footage to, again, even better. So with my property, I built an extension downstairs. I went up into the loft, adding a bedroom, as well as modernizing the whole house in the process. And finally, step three, try and buy in a growth area. If you're buying below market value, you're able to add value to the property and also buy in an area that is increasing in value anyway. You are onto a absolute gold mine. Not to flex, but again, this is what I did. And 
you can too. As a general rule, you want to make sure you are buying near transport links to major city centres. Major city centres tend to be a source of jobs people want to travel to and so by default a source of money. So in my case, I bought five minutes walk from St Albans City Station, which has a direct line into King's Cross in London. Even though I didn't need to commute to London, at the time I bought it, it was about 40 minutes train journey into King's Cross. Now it's 19 minutes. I knew when buying the property that transport links were due to improve and get quicker and the moment they did that elevated house prices in the area because of the shorter commute. Research the areas you want to live and investigate if this is an area you believe more and more people will want to live in over the next two, five, ten years. If so, prices are likely to increase more than other areas where less and less people may want to live. You don't need to worry about following all these steps. Even just thinking about one or two of them when looking into your next home could make a huge difference to your wealth. Check out my other videos for more property investment advice.